right, I want to teach you my approach to AC circuits, which will be different from what's in the book. It's not just my approach, um, but I don't, I'm not going to teach you phasers. Uh, I want you to learn how to use complex exponentials to deal with AC circuits. So um, what we're going to do is consider a um, situation where you have an AC EMF. And again, this might be um, just like the motor generator we talked about last week or the week before, where you take a, a wire rotating in a magnetic field, it generates an oscillating EMF. Um, so the EMF that's generated here might go like some peak value times cosine omega t. Okay, And that's going to tend to push current back and forth, um, just like when you plug in something to, to the power socket, uh, and to power outlet in the wall. And let's consider what this does to various circuit elements. So I'm just going to consider a series, a, a set of parallel um, circuit elements. Okay. Now each one of these will see the AC EMF independently, and so um, this will just, you know, produce a situation where current will flow back and forth out of this. I should draw it like that, out of this power supply, and part of that current will go down through the resistor, part through the capacitor, part through the inductor. And it turns out the amount of current that will flow will depend on how fast I oscillate, the frequency omega. Now in this case, so last week, omega was a thing we solved for. Okay, we considered a circuit, we um, charged a capacitor, we threw a switch, and an oscillation arose. And that, excuse me, the frequency of that oscillation was something we determined. In this case, omega is given. So we're going to imagine that the power supply, somebody's cranking it at a certain frequency omega that generates an EMF that oscillates at that same frequency. All right. So we're going to use AC, uh, sorry, complex exponentials to do this analysis. Um, and to do that, I mean, this is really just a mathematical trick, but it's, it becomes, it's very useful and is a, a good shortcut to getting to the answer. Now, what, what is the answer? What do we want to know here? We want to know the current. So we want to know what the current looks like that's flowing through each of these elements. Um, now, the current that we're going to uh, worry about um, will have the same form as this EMF. It turns out this frequency is uh, the frequency at which this current will oscillate to any of these currents. So it could be the current coming out of the um, EMF, the current going through the resistor, through the capacitor, through the inductor. Um, we'll all have a form that's the following. Um, cosine of omega t, okay, plus some phase. Okay. Um, so we already know omega. That's given. And these are the two. I naught and the phase are we, what we don't know. How much current will flow, and will it flow with a phase shift relative to the driving term? Okay. Now I'll, I'll say more about this in class, but this um, solution assumes that we've we've had the EMF on for a long time. That there's no switch that was thrown at some time. Um, so it turns out that if if the EMF is on forever. Um, uh, or say if it's not on forever, so if I throw a switch first, imagine I have a, a switch in my circuit and I throw it, then the EMF is present. Um, the act of throwing that switch is like hitting the circuit with a hammer. And if there's any frequencies that, uh, it's like hitting, imagine um, uh, a driven spring mass system, which we talked about in 1B. Uh, if you take a spring mass system and you hit it, it will oscillate at its own natural frequency but I can drive it at frequencies different than its own natural frequency. Um, and so you can have a situation where you have a natural frequency oscillation on top of a driven frequency. What we're going to assume is that the natural frequency oscillation has some damping. So there is some resistance in this case in there. And that oscillation will die out with time. Okay. And so I'm going to wait long enough so that the natural oscillation dies out, and all that's left over is the fact that I'm pushing the circuit back and forth at frequency omega. And this is what this solution represents. Okay, that's the long time behavior after all the natural frequencies die out. Okay, so I know it's going to look like this. My task is solving for I naught and phi. Now it turns out the easiest way to do this is to um, represent these two solutions as with complex exponentials. So this is going to be real of the peak um, EMF times e to the i omega t. Okay, And i we're going to write as real part of the peak current i naught. Um, and the difference here, this is going to be a real number. Okay, This one I'm going to make a complex number. Okay, And that's because I'm going to bury this phase in here. 
Okay. And just to remind you, um, the reason I can do that is I can write any complex number as an amplitude times e to the i phi. Okay, so it turns out that's exactly what I'm writing here, and this phase factor phi um, is is included in that complex number i naught. Okay. All right, so let's let's do this. For a resistor, it's straightforward. We know that you know the the EMF. Um, will equal IR, and I can just write it down. So I know if I'm just looking at the current through the resistor, this is true, and finding the the current is trivial. That's just going to be um, peak EMF over R times cosine omega t. Okay, done. There's no phase shift, so it's in phase with the with the EMF. Okay, it gets more interesting if I do an inductor. So let's do an inductor, and I'm going to use again this description here, where I have complex exponentials. Okay, so just to show you in the circuit, I'm going to consider this leg of the circuit. Current's going to flow through my inductor. I'm going to go all the way over here first and do the inductor. Okay, and so I don't care about the rest of this circuit for now. I'm just going to focus on that. And there's going to be a balance between the EMF of the generator and the EMF dropped across the inductor. And I can write that on the next page here. And I'll change colors. Okay. Um, so the EMF will be balanced by L di dt, okay? And just to be clear, that comes from the fact that if I go around the circuit, I, I increase the energy by the EMS. I'm following an electron around the circuit. It gets a boost of energy from the motor generator, or from the generator, uh, and then I drop that energy going through the inductor, okay? And so I get L di dt as my... Um, EMF. All right, so now if I um, replace these expressions, what I'm going to do is acknowledge that both of them can be written as complex exponentials. So I have E naught, E to the I omega T. Now really I want to take the real part of this, okay? That'll give me uh, E naught cosine omega t, which is what the EMF is. But I'm going to take the, the real part later. So I'm just going to write down the complex pieces here. So L di dt. Now I'm going to write the current, again, as a complex exponential. So the only place time shows up is E the i omega t. So this becomes i omega L times i, which is i naught tilde E to the i omega t. Now the, the um, these are equal, I can cancel them out, and now I'm solved for the current as a function of the EMF. Okay, the peak value of the EMF. So the peak value of the current as a function of the peak value of the EMF. All right, now if I look at the structure of this expression, I have something that looks like, you know, quote, EMF is IR. Okay, really, we call, we write this thing down as the EMF, the peak value of the EMF goes like something we call the complex impedance times the peak value of the current. Okay, So this acts like a resistance, this complex impedance, and we can treat it like a resistance. So in fact, what we'll see later on is if I know the impedance of a certain element, I can use rules for adding resistors in series and parallel to build the complex impedance for a, a, a composite circuit. Okay, And that's how we'll use it later on. All right, so the impedance of an inductor is just I omega L. Now, it turns out the I gives you a phase shift. I'm going to write that down as, I mean, any complex number, including I, I can write as E to the I times something, okay, times an amplitude. Here, the amplitude is 1 because it's um, the distance along the imaginary axis is 1, if you like, for I. And I can write down I as E to the I pi over 2, it turns out, okay? All right, but we'll come back to that. Now, the other part of the impedance here is that it scales linearly with the frequency. So if I have a frequency of 0, um, this tells me the impedance is also 0. So th this you, you can interpret this impedance like a resistance, okay? So the inductor at low frequency provides no resistance to current flow. And that we understood already, because we talked about how inductors at low frequencies um, which is equivalent to waiting a long time for an LR circuit that we talked about last week. You wait for a long time, things become steady state, there's no changes, the frequency of oscillations in the circuit goes to zero, this acts like a short. Okay.
And if I look at a transient where I have a, a switch that I throw, or I look at very high frequencies, that's when the inductor really does its work and it prevents the currents from changing. And here it looks like an open circuit. Okay, So this is equivalent to what we talked about last week um, for throwing the switch and waiting a long time. Okay, All right. So we want to solve for the current now. So we can write down that I tilde um, naught is going to be the peak EMF divided by the impedance, which is I omega L. Now I can rewrite this as minus I, because if I 1 over I is just the same as minus I, because minus 1 um, is I squared. Okay. Um, and I can also write down that minus i is the same as e to the minus i pi over 2. And that's because if I put minus pi over 2 into the expression cosine theta plus i sine theta, I get minus i. Okay. And this is the. Okay, so now what I want to do is put that back into my expression for the current. So now I'm going to take the real part of this because I've solved for the uh, complex coefficient out front. I'm going to get the peak EMF over omega L, e to the minus, oops, I pi over 2, e to the I omega T, okay. Now this is just going to become the following. I'll get, um, this is a real coefficient here. This is just a, the peak value of the current we've now found. And this just becomes cosine omega T minus pi over 2, okay. So there you go. We've solved for the current that flows through a resistor um, driven by an AC source. Okay, So what this tells us is that there's a phase shift between um, the current and the voltage when when you look at the current across an inductor and the voltage, I mean, sorry, the voltage across an inductor and the current through an inductor. Okay, So let me try to draw that. So the, the EMF okay, across the inductor, we had picked a cosine. Okay, so it looks like this. Um, now the current, when I have minus pi over 2, what that means is that the peak value, so cosine of uh, equal to 1, is now shifted to omega t bigger than 0, right? So if I want to find where the argument of this thing here is equal to 0, it's no longer at 0 because I have this phase shift, 0 time, it's going to be at positive time. So it turns out I'm going to shift it by pi over 2, which turns out to be uh, a half a wavelength, a quarter wavelength, sorry. So what I end up getting um, is the following, where the current will peak um, at the zero of the EMF. Okay, and that's understood because we know the. Um, here we go. Okay, so this is the current here. Um, so that's understood because we know that the current is proportional, or the sorry, the EMF is proportional to the time derivative of the current. And so the EMF should go to zero when the current um, rolls over and becomes uh, has a zero slope. So we say that this current waveform lags the voltage because it peaks at a later time. Okay, so you can see that uh, when I have a peak in the EMF, the peak in the current follows it um, by a quarter wavelength or uh, uh, quarter period, I should say. So we say that the current lags the voltage or the EMF for an inductor. That's supposed to be lag -z, okay, for an inductor. Okay. All right. So we see a pi over two lag, as we call it. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Good. Now let's let's consider the same thing for a capacitor. Then I'll quit this video. It's already getting too long here. Um, so if I do it for a capacitor now, so imagine I have my EMF and just a capacitor here. Um, so the same setup as before. Here I have the EMF has to equal the charge on the capacitor over C. Okay. Um, right. And so what I can write down is that I know I want to write this in terms of current. That's what I'm after. I know that the current is equal to um, dQ dt. Now in this case, 
um, the current will result in charging the capacitor, so there's no negative sign here, it's a positive sign. So any positive current results in positive charge increase on the capacitor. Uh, and so this tells me that um, the EMF is equal to 1 over C times the integral okay, of the current uh, with time. Okay, because I can just invert that equation to find Q in terms of I, right? Okay, um, and so if I use my, um, again, I'm going to use complex exponentials. This uh, left-hand side is just uh, E naught, E to the I omega t. Um, this becomes 1 over C. Now, if I take the integral of E to the I omega t, what I end up getting is 1 over I omega times I tilde E to the I omega t. Again, these two terms cancel, and now I have, again, a relationship between I and epsilon naught. And what I see, and I call this my impedance here, so the impedance for a capacitor is going to be 1 over I omega C. Okay, and again, that, you know, what, the way we interpret the impedance is like a resistance. It tells us the you know, resistance of the capacitor to current being driven to it, okay? And we see for omega going to zero, that means uh, in the steady state limit. So you know, going back to last week, when the switch is thrown, you wait a long time, everything settles down. We know that in that limit, at low frequency, um, we see that the impedance goes to infinity, and this acts like an open circuit. Okay, and if we look at a high frequency signal, um, this, the capacitor in that case, and that's, again, going back to last week, we talked about throwing the switch, so that there's a fast transient when I throw the switch, very high frequency behavior. Um, we treat the capacitor as a dead short, as we say. So it, it looks like a short circuit, or looks like a wire, okay? And so this uh, impedance is con consistent with that intuition that we talked about last week. All right, so now I want to go on and solve for the, uh, the current, and I have that the peak current for the capacitor goes like I omega C times the peak value of the EMF. Um, I can write this as E to the I pi over 2 omega C times the EMF. And now I can go and plug that back in and solve for the current. So let's do that on the next page. So that becomes that the current now is the real part of I Sorry. Okay. The real part, I've already written down what I tilde is, um, of omega C peak EMF e to the positive I pi over 2 e to the I omega T. And so this gives me that the current through uh, the capacitor, current to the capacitor, I should say, goes like omega C epsilon not epsilon, E naught, cosine omega t plus pi over 2. Okay, so now we also get a phase shift for the capacitor, but it has a different phase shift. It now has a positive phase shift, and what that means is that the, if I look at my EMF and current, again my EMF is just a cosine, so I'll draw that. It turns out this tells me that the, um, the current will lead the voltage, okay? And so that means that if there's a peak here in the in the um, uh, in the EMF, that the uh, peak in the current will be back here effectively. Now, really, it doesn't lead it in time. There's no uh, what this, this doesn't mean that um, the current knows what the voltage is going to do beforehand. It just means that the waveforms have this phase relationship that where the um, EMF is peaking um, will always lag behind, sorry, where the current is peaking will always appear to lag behind the um, the voltage or the EMF waveform. Okay, so here's the current. So you get this lagging. So here's a, from here to here, um, it lags behind. Okay, the EMF will lead it. Okay, so the current lags the EMF for a capacitor. Okay. All right, let me stop there. That's plenty.